managed to gather today and tune in to this God the channel, the channel of Ethel Ministries and Assemblies, where we enjoy the Word of God. Please take your seat in your sitting room and open your heart to receive this Word of the Lord today in the mighty name of Jesus. And as we do so, if you can, turn with me today as we look at the, the subject I have entitled Following the Shepherd. Following the Shepherd. For the next 20 minutes plus, listen to this word of God. Make sure it enters into your heart and makes a difference. Following the Shepherd. I have a question for you this evening. And the question is, who are you following? Who are you really following? In a crisis moment like this, there are many voices and all are clamoring or clamoring for your attention. Each of the voices are clamoring or cl uh, looking for your attention. It depends what you would want really to hear. They are very nice voices, especially in our time of the crisis of COVID-19. There have been so many voices that sometimes you wonder which one to believe. When you turn to the social media, they are giving their own. You go to the uh, news uh, guys, they're also giving their own kind of, uh, of uh, voices and they, they seem to be authoritative. You go to the academicians, they're giving their own. You go to World uh, Health uh, or World Health Organization, they're also giving their own. You go to each one of the churches, whichever place, somebody's giving a voice somehow. Which voice? are you listening to? Because each of the voices is clamoring for your attention. Which one are you listening to? I choose to listen to the voice of a great shepherd. His name is Jesus Christ. I choose to listen to the voice of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, in the book of Mark chapter 5, if you are reading from verse 35 to verse 36, you will take note that the Bible says, this time Jairus, if you come from the top and then from verse 21, Jairus is actually, uh, he actually asks Jesus, he says to Jesus, hey, could you please come to my home? My daughter is very, very sick. And when Jairus asked for that, the Bible says that, he, and he, uh, Jesus says, I'll come. And he started walking with him to his house. But on the way, he's delayed because there's a woman with an issue of blood who touches his garment and receives his healing. So he has to stop and address that situation. But the Bible says, while he is addressing this woman, while he's talking to this woman, some people come from Jairus' house in verse 35 to verse 37 and they say to Jairus, Jairus, you need to, to know that leave the master alone. Do not bother her, him, because right now, as we are saying to you, your daughter has just died. It does not tell us how Jairus reacted, but it tells us that Jesus turned over to Jairus and said, fear not, only believe. Fear not, only believe. Amen. So it's like Jesus turned to, to, to Jairus with such kind of a voice of authority and told him, you must not fear anything. Just believe. Amen. Just believe. Amen. Just like he believed when he called for Jesus to come and heal his daughter, he must continue to believe until the daughter is raised from the dead. Amen. I want to say to you, what voice are you following? Are you following the voice of Jesus? Are you following the voice of the social media? Are you following the voice of ZNBC? Are you following the voice of CNN or BBC? 
which voice are you listening to? Jesus said in the book of John chapter 6, I believe it's verse 63, he says, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. And Jesus again said, very interesting statement, I mean, because Peter actually, who, who, who said, after hearing the question of Jesus, he said the statement, he said, where can we go for you have the words of life? Amen. You see, the words of life are not with what you are hearing most of the time. They are stealing from you the faith that you need to believe God for. The words of life are with Jesus Christ. Amen. So let's look in the word of God on following the shepherd, Jesus. Amen. Following the shepherd, Jesus. Amen. Hearing his voice. Amen. Let's go to the book of Psalm 23. Amen. Amen. Psalm 23. And let's read Psalm 23 beginning from verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures, and he leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yes, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my herd with oil. My cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. 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 Look at the word of the Lord and we'll be coming to the closure soon. But look at the word of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. I want you to compare that with John chapter 10. John chapter 10. Look at John chapter 10 and we read verse 9. The Bible says, I am the door. This is Jesus sharing here from the seven on him being the shepherd. He says, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, that means by Jesus, then he says he will be saved and he will go in and out and notice the last scripture and find pasture. Amen. Find pasture. In verse 2, it says, He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. Amen. Jesus is the shepherd to follow. Amen. I'm not saying you will not hear many voices. You will hear many voices. But which one will you follow? Which one will you follow? Choose to follow the voice of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because when you enter in there, by him, you will find the pasture you are looking for. Amen. Follow the shepherd, Jesus Christ. Amen. Follow the shepherd, Jesus Christ. Amen. If you look in verse, uh, in verse 3, he says, He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. In John chapter 10, looking at verse 11, John in chapter 10 and reading verse 11. Notice what the Bible says in verse 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. He, said, he says he restores my soul. He said God cares for you. He does care for you. He restores my soul. And if we go further in verse 4. He says, yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. I read something in John chapter 10, and the, uh, verse 25. Notice what he said. Jesus answered them, I told you and you do, you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But you do not believe 
because you are not of my sheep, as I say to you. My sheep hear my voice. Here it goes. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Verse 28. And I give them eternal life, Amen. and they shall never perish. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I like the last statement. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my father's hand. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Even when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, even death itself cannot snatch you out of the hand of the shepherd Jesus Christ Amen. when you follow him. Amen. Follow the shepherd. Amen. Follow the shepherd. Amen. Wherever you go, wherever you may be, follow the shepherd. Amen. Whatever happens to you, follow the shepherd. Amen. So the question is, let me give you three things in a short moment on how can I follow the shepherd. The first thing is what Jesus refers to in John chapter 10. And that's beginning from verse 25. If you read that part, you will notice he talks about believing. So let me give you about two things before you go home, or before rather, before you just begin to pray. It's saying, the first thing is, you must believe that he is in your personal shepherd. If you are going to follow the shepherd, Jesus Christ, you must move him away from just being a group shepherd or the shepherd of the entire body of Christ. Yes, he is. But you must begin to take him in as your personal shepherd. Your personal shepherd. Amen. Just like he says in the book of uh, Psalm 23, verse 1. It says, the Lord is mine, not our. I don't know about what other uh, versions say. But he says, he is mine. Shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. Amen. And do you believe in your heart that he is your personal shepherd? You may not be able to follow him. You'll be following whatever others are saying, whatever everything is saying, whatever this one is saying, this one is saying. But when you follow him as your personal shepherd, he will lead you. Amen. He will lead you. Amen. And when he leads you, he leads you where there is still water, he leads you where there is green pastures, he leads you where your soul shall be, can be restored. He leads you where you will receive the anointing the, on your head. You will be refreshed in other ways. You will come to a place where goodness and mercy shall chase after you. Amen. Not just they, they will run after you. You will come to that place because he is my shepherd, Amen. personal shepherd. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd, Amen. not our shepherd. He is a personal shepherd. Amen. Sometime back I was told a story. I think it was Arabi Bill Shamba. He is preaching. He preached one time about a girl who was picked from the congregation, from the children's church. Rather, and he was meant to stand. Uh, she was meant to stand in front and to rehearse uh, the, the whole Psalm 20, uh, 23. And the young girl was a shy type of a girl, and she stood up there and she simply said, "The Lord is my shepherd. That's all I need." And she went and sat down. The Lord is my shepherd. That's all I need. Amen. Follow the shepherd. Amen. In a very personal way. Amen. In a very personal way. And when you do so, he will lead you where there is still water. He will lead you where there is green pastures. Amen. He will lead you where you can find oil for the dryness in your life. He will lead you where there is refreshing. Your cup shall run over. Goodness and mercy shall follow you, shall run after you Amen. because there is a good shepherd. Who is coming to be always whom you are following? Amen. The first thing is make him your personal shepherd. Number two, if you are going to follow the shepherd, then you must believe that he speaks. Amen. First is believe him as your personal shepherd. Number two is believe that he speaks. 
he has a voice. You see, Jesus is not Jimumu, or rather, Jesus is not a, a dark person like these other gods that they worship and they're basically fight. They make them with their own hands and then they make them God. No, no, no. Jesus is a shepherd who has a voice. Amen. He has a voice. Amen. In the book of John chapter 10, he actually says, he says, you know, he says, the sheep hear my voice. They hear my voice. You must be able to know and believe in your heart that whatever state I am in, the challenge we have many times is that we don't differentiate the voice of the Lord Jesus Christ and the voice, the, the voice of the shepherd Jesus Christ and the voice, the ordinary voice. You see, the voice of our Lord Jesus, the difference is not how authoritative it is. The difference is the love it comes with. Amen. When Jesus speaks, when the shepherd speaks, the, the, the words are deepened, soft into love. You can sense the love of God when he speaks. That's the difference we have. When the other voices speak, they speak with condemnation. When the other voices speak, they speak with manipulation. When the other voices speak, they speak as if they own you. But when Jesus speaks, he speaks with love. He speaks with love. You must believe that he has a voice. Amen. He speaks. He is not quiet. Jesus is not quiet. In fact, almost 70% of what you hear every day, some of the thoughts that come through your mind almost every day, they are voices of the Holy Spirit. Follow the shepherd. Believe in your heart that he still speaks. Believe it, he still speaks. Even in the midst of the noise of all this COVID-19, not only COVID-19, in the midst of all the challenges we go through, in the midst of the darkest moment, where there's a valley of the shadow of death, he still speaks. Amen. He still speaks. Believe it in your heart. Number three and the last one. Believe that he cares for you. Amen. Amen. Believe that he cares for you. You must believe in your heart that this shepherd, I am going to follow him as my personal shepherd. Amen. I'm going to follow him because he has a voice of instruction for my life. Amen. And you must believe that he cares for you. He cares for you to the abandonment of his own life and glory. Jesus cares for you to the abandonment of his own life and glory. Amen. He left glory in heaven just for you. Amen. What tells you, what makes you think that even today in the worst situation that you may be in, he will not leave his glory to come for you. He will come for you. He will come for you. Because he is a good shepherd. He's not a hireling. He does not leave the sheep just because he's injured. It's not like some of us or some of the, the, the believers who when their brother has fallen and he is no longer walking with the Lord, they will abandon him and they will let him like that. No, no, no. This is a good shepherd. Amen. He cares for his own. Amen. He doesn't leave you. Like they say, the soldiers, you don't leave your own, your wounded brothers and sisters in the, in the battle. You don't do that. Even when you die, I mean, I was watching one time on the documentary. So the someone said, why we usually bury a shallow grave for the soldiers? At the point of the documentary, it was one of the brothers who was sharing with me. He says, you know, that when somebody is killed in battle and it's not his country where they have been killed, he says to me, he said to me, we use a shallow grave. The reason for that is because when the war is over, we must come and collect our own and go and we bury them back at home. He said, Jesus Christ, even the hair or oh, oh, just this hair of your head cannot fall to the ground without his permission. Amen. Amen. That's how much he cares for you. Follow this shepherd Amen. by hearing his voice, by making him 
know, personal shepherd. Not just one who takes care of the church, but the one who cares for you. Amen. He cares for you to the abandonment of his glory in heaven. Amen. He abandoned the glory. Amen. He can still do that today, and he still does it. He cares for you. Amen. In 19, I remember it was 1989 or 1990, somewhere there. A man of God from Zimbabwe was preaching at the church where I was co-pastoring, or I was an assistant pastor. And when he was when he, as he was preaching, he shared something. He was talking about compassion, and he made a statement that really touched my heart. He says, "You know, Jesus Christ. If he says he, says, he talked about how Jesus Christ is in such a way that he, he cares for us that even when you ask him for a stick of matches." He will give it to you. Amen. Amen. That's how far he cares for you. Amen. Which voice are you following? Which, which shepherd are you following? What leader are you really following in your heart, in your personal life? Are you following the good shepherd, Jesus Christ? Or are you following mystery? Of, I mean, I have heard people how they are religiously, if I use the word religiously, I borrow it from out there, religiously followed almost everything in detail of COVID-19, where it started from. Now there is all kinds of things, oh, it started in the US, it started in this, it started here, it started there, and they are following it nicely. And no, there's nothing wrong with that. But where is that leading you is a question you must ask yourself, is it giving you the peace that you require? Because the good shepherd leads you where there is still water. That's why he leads you. He leads you where there is still water. That's why he leads you. He leads you where there is great pastures. Is this leadership which you are following, is it leading you where there is still water? Is it leading you to a place that even when you go through the valley of the shadow of death, you will know deep within your heart that nothing at all will snatch you out from the hand of God. That you cannot be permitted to die except by the permission of the Lord. Is that what you have in your heart? Following the shepherd is very important. You follow the shepherd by making sure he is your personal shepherd. I know you're already a Christian, born again, washed the blood of Jesus, but the question still stands, is he your personal shepherd? Or is he just a shepherd of the church? Yes, he's the shepherd of the church. He is the chief shepherd. That's what the scripture says in the book of 1 Peter chapter 5. He is the chief shepherd. But the question still stands, is he your personal shepherd? Do you relate to him in a live, personal way? When anything happens to you, do you actually have it in you that if nothing happens to you and the shepherd leaves you alone? No, no, no. He doesn't. He may leave the 99 righteous, but he will fight you. Even if right now as I'm speaking, you are backslidden. You, have no, you are no longer walking with the Lord the way you should be walking with the Lord. But something in you is telling you that I think I can get back to the Lord. Hey, the shepherd is willing to get back to you. Amen. He has never left you. Amen. He cares for you. Are you in that place where you are believing him as your personal shepherd? Until goodness and mercy follows you all the days of your life. I want to pray with you this morning. This evening. You may be right now lying in bed because you are not well, you are sick. Possibly you are even watching us, but you are in the uh, in, in the in the in the COVID-19 uh, you know, uh, exclusion, sick in your body. And you are saying that can God heal me of this coronavirus? Yes, he can. Amen. Yes, he can. Amen. He says it very clear in the book of Psalm 1, 2, 3, that he heals us from all our diseases. Not one, any kind of disease, he will heal us from it. If you can believe in your heart, he will heal you. Amen. Or maybe you are just sick in 
in the in the hospital right now, or maybe it's at home, you're watching and you're not feeling very well. Hey, I want to pray for you at this moment in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank you that you are the healer. Everyone else can prescribe the medicine. Everyone else can care for us. But the healer remains you. Nobody, oh God, can heal us. Only you are the healer. So this evening, in the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands on each and every person that right now is not feeling well, is sick, or in Jesus' name, whatever state of affairs you are in, physically speaking, I speak in healing in Jesus' name. I declare that in the name of Jesus, the shepherd, Jesus Christ, may he apply the oil of the Holy Spirit on you for your healing in the name of Jesus. If you are deaf, I, in the name of Jesus, I place my hands on your ears right now figuratively and I speak to those deaf ears, open in Jesus' name. If you are blind, I speak to your eyes, open in the mighty name of Jesus. If you cannot walk, I speak a paralyzed and so forth, I speak in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk in Jesus' name. Lord, I give you praise right now. I give you glory every single healing. I thank you for what you have done in the mighty name of Jesus. However you may be here now and you are saying, Bishop, I do not know Jesus as my personal Savior and as the Lord of my life. You are saying, please help me to be born again. You see, we did not manufacture the word born again. Jesus Christ, he is the one that saved it. In John chapter 3, he was telling a pastor, actually he most likely was almost a bishop, a teacher of the law, high-ranking person. He was telling him and said, hey, you must be born again. The man didn't know what he was talking about. He I want to say to you, you must be born again. It doesn't matter what state you are in, you must be born again. You must receive Jesus Christ as your personal savior and as the Lord of your life. If you say today, not just complying with what I'm saying, but you are making a decision to follow Jesus, would you please pray this prayer after me? Please say after me, Oh God, I know that I am a sinner, but today I have heard the word of God. I open my heart to receive Jesus as my personal Savior and as the Lord of my life. I believe in my heart that Jesus died for me on the cross. He died for my sin. He was buried and the third day he rose from the dead. I believe it in my heart. And with my mouth I confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I thank you that you wash me with the precious blood of Jesus. Thank you that I receive Jesus right now as my personal Savior and as the Lord of my life. In the name of Jesus, I thank you. Amen. I want just to bless you. May the Lord bless you. May the face of the Lord shine upon you. May He keep you until we meet again on Friday at 18.30. May the Lord bless you. May He be with you. Please write to us. Call us. We are willing to protect you and minister to you. God bless you. It is well. Amen.
Jesus Christ, we met him during the time of COVID-19 shutdown. God bless you. We love you and be safe.